Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we are going to be working on the subrails for the 33-3 window. So the last video, we just did a quick run through, kind of giving you guys an update on the car and where the frame was at. And one of the things I need to do is build a subrail structure so that we can get the body down and start having some kind of fixed points that we can measure and we can fix to to get the body all back in shape. And this is one of the first things while the chassis is just sitting like this, we can get the subrails built off of basically the stock bolt holes for the original floors and subrails, and then we can kind of go from there. So I did the Stroll car, the 32.5 window, last winter, just about this time, doing the same thing, and it seemed to work out pretty good. We're on the home stretch with that car, and the way everything went together was really, really nice, and I'm very happy with it. So we're gonna do kind of a similar thing uh, with this one, starting out with some one uh, by two um, 16 gauge wall uh, box tubing that we get at our local metal yard. They had a ton of it, so I bought another like 60 or 80 feet of it, so we have plenty. And we're gonna build up a, a substructure for this car that eventually the body will weld to, and also the floors will weld to, and it's pretty much gonna become the whole underside of the car. So um, as you can see here, I'm gonna take you guys off the, off the stand here, and you can see how much this needs to change. So you can see this big you know, gap here. So we need to change all of that because it's going to run pretty much the 80% of the length of the frame. The first bolt hole for the cow foot is right here. So that's right where we're going to start, probably just behind this rivet here. Box tubing will start there. It'll bolt on there and then we'll work our way back. And it also, the frame kind of curves in and out. So you can see that way over here, um, it kind of curves out. So I need to do the same thing with this box tubing. So that's why it's quite a bit longer than we need because uh, some area is going to be taken up by just doing, you know, the different cuts. So uh, we're going to take you along along the way. I'll show you a couple of things as I do this that you need to watch out if you're doing the same thing. And hopefully this will be a refresher if anybody's looking to make floors and subrails for an early Ford or an early car that has absolutely nothing. This is a good universal way to do it.
right, so I got the subrail started here, this first side. Um, I learned from my last time that you need to make, uh, if I put notes of my measurements, where my cuts were, we should be able to just replicate this on the other one pretty quickly. So I've been putting my notes of where um, the cuts are, so I can just kind of, at least for these first handful of cuts, we can just make them straight away, put it on the, ta on the frame, and it'll just flow in real nice. Um, and then we'll just drill the bolt holes and stuff. So I got one that I made here. The frame starts to bow out um, and it probably needs another cut because you can see it's still flowing way off of the frame, but we're running into the step here. So I want to leave this piece plenty long so we don't end up with it too short at the end. So what I'm going to do is let that alone up there for right now where it's coming off the frame and try and right here where the frame steps up, uh, we're going to put a cut, probably a few cuts right in here um, or maybe one larger cut, get this thing to get up on top of the frame, then we can go back here. So um, this is kind of a, where we get into a little bit of the tricky part where it's going up and kind of bowing out at the same time. But you can see here on the side, it's pretty flat along here, body's mounted, and then right there we just had a handful of cuts to get that to go up. So as I go, I lock everything down with the bolts. So we have a bolt right here that I'm gonna probably drill now before I do any more cuts and then I can get it locked in right here and then if we do make another cut it will probably be back in here where it's sunken in from the frame a little bit um, to pull that out but that's just one small little cut mainly the, the major stuff needs to be right here to get this to lift up for the step of the frame so um, that's where it's going to start getting a little tricky.
right, so we got this side fitting real sweet. I'm very, very happy with how uh, this all turned out. I have all the cuts we made tacked up. Everything's pretty good. I'm going to wait on finish welding everything uh, until we get kind of the whole structure built because uh, it's going to move around a lot if there's not some other bracing to kind of hold it and lock it in place other than just the bolts. So uh, for now, I'm going to leave it alone. Now, the nice thing with me this time around, making sure that I notate my measurements, I'm able to take this piece to the other side and I can kind of start doing some of these cuts, but I can do like a bulk of these cuts right in one shot and then move to the next thing instead of doing one at a time and taking it off every time like I did with this one. I've already kind of calculated everything. So like from here to here, I can make all these cuts and they'll pretty much uh, be able to be done with those, drill the hole, move down and, and kind of do it that way. So hopefully this side will go a lot quicker and we'll have two of these uh, sub rails that are fitting on, onto the frame with a set of bolts. So this time around we ended up making, I made a little pattern. This is a pretty heavy bend here. And uh, again, reminder this, I don't have a uh, hydraulic tubing bender that fits rectangular tubing. So we're doing this bare bones, basic way with what we got. So um, I just basically took this short piece to figure out how many cuts needed to be made and where. And uh, I got this piece fitting pretty good. So doing it on this smaller piece, I was able to just quickly go back and forth and it worked out pretty nice. Uh, my cuts this time around would definitely be nicer because I'm not just making a rough piece here, but uh, our pattern looks pretty good. So if I mark 
this one here at the same spot and we'll make the bends uh, same distance apart and then I made multiple cuts where we pulled it together and then cut it again another thickness of the blade it's just a slow um, slow way you can do it to or, or controlled way that you can creep up on the bend to make it all work but that flow is real nice then when we come to here I'll have to let it overlap draw the line where it intersects for our angle and then we should be good to cut that piece off and get this fitting up and um, we'll have our first one made and then the second one is just should go even quicker than the first one. So I got all of the pieces after a bunch of cutting and welding and modifying. Uh, we got all of the pieces made and braces in place. I uh, ended up adding these two braces right here. Um, and then we added one cross brace back here, which will be up above the drive shaft. And then one in the back here, which we can kind of have uh, the floor pan kind of come back and, and meet with that rear panel inside uh, rear deck panel in there. So that should be pretty good. I left this area open. Um, for obviously for drive shaft and all that type of stuff and possibly like the seat getting sunk down in there uh, may be helpful we'll see um, and then up here obviously I left this open right in here for now uh, because we're, we're gonna have to put some kind of transmission tunnel slash hoop in there I'm not quite sure yet so I wanted to leave that open that's to be determined but once we put floor pans and cover 
uh, this and tie everything together. Really, it'll be no problem at all. But everything should be good now. All the bowl holes line up nice. Threads in all factory locations. And I just have a lot of welding now. I just gotta weld up pretty much every cut, every joint on this whole thing. And I'm gonna use the frame as a fixture, which is really nice. I can just keep everything bolted down and probably do 80 to 90% of the welds on the top here. And then we just have a little bit on the bottom that we can uh, flip over and I can try and brace that on the table to do that welding on the welding table. And we should be good. And then we'll sand everything down, put it on the frame, bolt it down and show you what it looks like all finished up. After a bunch of work, I probably had like, uh, I don't know, two, three, four hours into just sanding both sides of this. We had to sand all the welds on the bottom side to uh, make sure that it bolted flat. Uh, I had done all the welding on the bottom. Now the only downside with doing this with the pie cuts uh, or the relief cuts that we do on this is when we're welding everything together, when it's like this on the frame and fixtured, nothing really moves around because it's all bolted down fast. But this bottom section here where the kick up is, I didn't have a fixture. I didn't take the time to make one to lock it in. So when I welded the uh, relief cuts that are on the bottom with this thing turned upside down, because it's not fixtured, they shrink. And actually changes this bend over the rear kick up and makes it worse or bit, you know, uh, taller and it actually is up off the frame. So last time we did the one on the stroll car, I actually bolted it back down and put a couple of relief cuts to pull it down and I welded it and sanded it. I didn't really love putting more cut, cuts into it. So what I ended up doing this time on this, and I didn't even, I was by myself, didn't even think to set the camera up. We have a couple photos we'll drop in. I uh, clamped it down and bolted it down and then I heated this top side with the rosebud and the sides and then I pulled it down with the torch and then because I was heating it, it actually did the reverse effect. It, it started uh, shrinking back together and, and just smoothed it out and took the bend out and flattened it out. So everything fits up real nice now. I just opened up a couple holes a little bit so the bolts drop down real nice. Everything's looking really good. Now I didn't put a crossbar up at the front area or back in here so it is kind of when it's not bolted to the car, there is some flex in there because of that. That is because I don't really know how the engine's gonna sit or what we need to do for a hoop. But for now, it's totally fine. It's plenty strong when it's bolted down. But when we do get to the time where we're putting in floors and building a trans tunnel and all that stuff, I'll put some kind of like hoop that's in there um, that we can either remove or is permanent. I don't really know yet, but we needed to get this structure built so that when we start working on the body and we get the body slid down to where we want it, we can make brackets to come off of like the B pillars, the A pillars, 
attach to this, weld together, and that'll get everything really, really solid. And of course, we're using these original bull holes in the frame, so we can use all this for measurements to make sure that we're getting the body all squared up and everything fits really nice. So there is a, re a method to my madness for doing this. Not only does it look cool, it gives a great base for making the floor pans. I will actually machine uh, or put these bolts on the way they did it on the shoulder car and make the heads really shallow when everything's done so the carpet will just lay over top of it um, with some sound deadening should be uh, really really good so a uh, big project I think I have th at least three days if not four days into doing all of this it is a lot of work but again we saved some money by building this out of some box tubing and a little bit of welding wire and gas we are uh, got a really nice product that will work out really well and will fit um, pretty nice when we get everything down on. So that is a video on sub rails on the 33. I'm really excited. We got a Model A cross member here. So one of the next videos, what we'll be working on is getting a Model A cross member set in here so that we can get the rear in here with the quick change, get all that set up and moving along. And uh, we'll set up and make this frame a roller next and uh, moving along. So I'm pretty happy to get this big project done so quickly. So thank you guys for following along. Appreciate it. Catch you later.